Falling off? Yeah. Oh, really? Are you sure it was that you? Yeah. All right, we're here at the Moto IQ Garage. It is 6 p.m. We are about four or five hours away from taking off on my inaugural trip to Laguna Sega. I've actually never been there. It's a bucket list track of mine to drive on, so I'm actually pretty excited about this. We got to work on our Project G20 here uh, probably a couple weeks ago, and just in preparation for this, there were a couple of issues that we've been dealing with, so we're gonna take you through some of the things we're doing for this track event here. Um, we'll start off with, first off, obviously fresh brakes. So we got fresh rotors, pads, all around. What we went with is our friends over at StopTech um, hooked us up with a set of their slotted rotors. So we have that both in the rear and in the front. G-Lock came through with some new pads. We used to run Hawk Blues on this car and unfortunately when we went to the P11, which is a later model G20 uh, brake pad, unfortunately they didn't have Hawk Blues in this. So we had to went with the uh, Hawk Blacks is what we went with. And honestly, we didn't like them as much as the old blue compound. Um, so what we're gonna try is the GP430 G-Lock pad for the front and GP540s for the rears we're gonna be using. Um, we're also gonna, uh, the guys at StopTech, their sister company, Centric Parts, they're more of a, you know, regular auto parts supplier. So they set us up with a new set of calipers for the front. We've been fighting some knockback issues with our brakes for the last few events, actually. Uh, specifically, let's say our last event that we ran with Speed Ventures was at California Speedway or Auto Club Speedway. And during turns one and two, which are through the oval, it's a long sustained left hand turn and what we found was that when we would come to the braking zone for the hard left turn three our pedal would go to the ground it would go to the floor and on the second pump our brakes would be fine and they would be there but on that first pump they would be gone so what we're thinking is that we were having some um, obviously piston knockback issues so the first thing that we did was replace wheel bearings before that auto close speedway event and that was obviously not the case new wheel bearings on all on both the front and the I mean front right and front left and the issue is still there so now that we went what we're going to go with is new brake pads and also a residual pressure valve from Willwood so what a residual pressure valve does they come in different pounds or different PSIs and what that's going to do is give residual pressure at all times so as of right now we went with the four PSI uh, residual pressure valve so what that's going to do is continuously put pressure on that piston so even though we are overworking obviously our bearings to the point where they're flexing so they're pushing the piston back now when they do that and they go back to straight the residual pressure valve will actually push the piston back to where it's supposed to be so in theory we won't feel that long pedal when this happens again this is all theory so we'll find out when we get to Laguna Seca tomorrow to see if it actually in actuality it actually works so what we see here, this is the residual pressure valve you see now plumbed into the front outlet of our master cylinder. Um, that is essentially what's going to help us out. Now, if we'll come over here and you'll see that there is some drag on the brake now. So if we try to turn it, you can see it turns in that there is pressure on the pad, but I can obviously turn it with my hands. So that's not exactly going to rob any horsepower. We'll see if there's any bad consequences from this. Um, just in case there is a problem with this, we did plumb a little piece here so we can bypass the residual pressure valve, just in case. Um, we don't, I don't, again, I don't foresee there being any issues because there really isn't that much pressure going into it. Um, beyond that, completely breed all the brakes and we will see if we can fix our braking issues. And then obviously new spark plugs, oil, oil filter, we're in the middle here of gapping our plugs and in the middle of a little bit of a revolution. Uh, last minute prep is always team procrastination. Uh, but other than that, she is ready to go. And again, first time at Laguna Seca, super excited for this. We take off uh, around 11 p.m. midnight, hoping to be up there in Monterey by, let's say, you know, uh, I think we're aiming for about six o'clock. Track opens at seven, driver's meeting is at 8.45. And I believe my first run session will be around 9.45. Uh, so, we will see you tomorrow on track and ready to test this thing out.
bike is safe and sound. Car is ready to go. Uh, we've already checked our tire pressures, checked our lug nuts, checked all fluids. Uh, bumper is on. The issue that we were having around turn one and two at California Speedway, we're basically going about 120, 140 miles an hour through that. A lot of G's on that poor little wheel bearing that was not designed for these R compound tires or the speeds that we're driving. So when we come up to the braking zone for third tree, the first thing that would happen is the brake would go all the way to the ground. So we're oh, that is definitely not it confidence inspiring and we're hoping that we won't have that issue anymore so after this first morning session we're going to test this out and hopefully everything works out so we'll see you soon did not check the alignment we can do that later didn't do that didn't do that didn't do that didn't do that, didn't do that. Didn't do that. pipe or at least a divorce portion of it full of steel wool probably put about four rectangular chunks and stuffed it all in there it's probably only like an inch inch and an eighth in diameter the divorce portion of it so uh use some clamps to try to keep all that stuff in place the car sounds a little more muffled you can't even hear the turbo spool like you used to when you would rev it up uh, the car is still loud it's not as tangy it doesn't sound like um, I guess there's really only one way to find out. So we're gonna wait for the next session in about an hour and send it and hope that we don't get sent home. So I did send it for the rest of the session. That was fun, but our original idea to stuff a bunch of steel wool into the divorce wastegate pipe of our turbo here, um, we kind of thought twice about it. Uh, not having a boost gauge in the car, that's only gonna mean that we are not gonna be able to know how much boost the car is building. So it's gonna over boost for sure. So instead of taking a chance of ruining the engine and popping it, uh, I took most of it out. So we only left one little bundle in there and I made the decision to go back out there and immediately I got the meatball flag telling me to get off track. That gives us a total of two laps in Laguna Seca. We made this huge road trip simply just for this. Uh, and in order to try to salvage the weekend, we're gonna head on down to Buntwello and at least try to get some track time in this weekend. But learn from our mistake. If you have a race car of any kind, or anything that's not even running a stock exhaust, you should really think twice about coming to Laguna Seca with whatever current setup you have. Uh, there are guys here with very elaborate 
muffler setups, mufflers coming out like bozo style. Um, they even, dudes are even putting bone stock exhaust like in their S2000s. Uh, really anything you can to stand under the 92 dB decibel limit. Don't be a noob, check your exhaust. And we'll give you an update on all the parts we're testing, especially the brakes. So I think we've actually fixed the braking issue, uh, but we will find out for sure after our Button Willow event tomorrow. And we'll report back. All right, track update number one. Came off track, had a good session. Brakes felt phenomenal. Uh, no piston knockback issues. Even after some of the loaded turns, uh, even coming from the front straight, you have a very hard left going into it when you're going 13 counterclockwise. I mean, clockwise 13. Uh, so, brakes are good, but we ran into an issue. We actually started boiling over the water reservoir. After a little more inspecting, it looks like our fans aren't actually kicking in. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at the wiring, take a look at the fuses and some of the relays, make sure that's happening. I don't feel that the casket's been compromised, car starts and it idles fine, so we're going to go back out, let it cool off on its own, and then go back out there in about 20 minutes or so, which is about an hour after the last session that we just went on, and hopefully everything will be good. But again, brakes feel phenomenal. Uh, it feels like the residual pressure valve is doing its job. Zero long pedal issues like we have had in the past. So it looks like that's finally resolved. We did come in and the pads were smoking, so we're definitely getting plenty of heat into the system. Um, for those that don't know, we are actually running stock G20 brakes still, so there really isn't that much heat capacity to them. So we're asking a lot from the components that we're using and they seem to be working perfectly. Again, no fade, good feel, good modulation on the brakes from the G-Lock brake pads. So, so far so good. It is gonna be plenty hot here in Buntwello, so we'll have plenty of opportunities to test the brake pads and get some really good heat into them. Hopefully we will not be hindered by our radiator issue or lack of radiator fan issue. Uh, I think it's just a matter of managing that. So make sure we stay out there a good solid two or three laps before coming off track and just make sure you co we cool off the car very well on its own because it's not gonna be doing it with the fan, obviously. And especially if we're gonna be sitting in the hot pits for a long time. Got to make sure that we're careful with that, turn the car off and not let it overheat while it's just standing around. Uh, so we'll be back.
that's a wrap for Bun Willow Raceway. Uh, we tested our car, everything went well. There were a couple small issues, but really completely unrelated to the braking parts that we're actually testing today. So to recap, today what we did, we were testing brand new rotors from Stop Tech. We were testing our G-Lock brake pads, which are the R16 compound in the front, R8 compound in the rear. We also added a residual pressure valve for the braking system for the front brakes in order to try to combat the piston knockback issue that we were having. It's a four PSI valve that we're using up there from Willway that we plumbed into our braking system. Now, final report, everything worked great. We finally have confident brakes again. There was a couple times that we had a little bit of piston knockback and specifically that was exiting the bus stop. So after the hard left-hander entering the bus stop, when you're about to hit, tap the brakes before exiting the bus stop, which technically I guess we're supposed to go flat out, but I'm still pussyfooting a little bit through there. So when I do tap the brakes on there, there is a little bit of a long pedal. The first time in a second pump, everything's back. Nowhere else did I feel the piston knockback issue, so we, I'm confident that it's fixed. We may tinker with maybe potentially putting in a higher PSI valve. I believe Willwood does make a six PSI valve, so we'll try that next time potentially to test this out uh, California Speedway in the next coming months since that's where we actually experience the majority of this of this failure or problem that we were having. Uh, unrelated issues to the braking system, our fan decided to stop working. Uh, so when I came off track the fir very first session, I came out hot right into the pits to try to check my tire pressures to actually set my base tire pressures for the day. And during that amount of time that the car was on, the car actually pegged the water temp gauge. Thankfully, the head gasket was not compromised. Everything is checking out, everything is fine. All I really needed to do was manage that throughout the day. So really all I had to do was take a solid two cool down laps before coming into the pits and the car is perfectly okay. No issues as far as that goes. So now that our braking issue is almost fixed, at least we feel confident it's about 90% fixed, it is now time to take our G20 to the next level. So now our next step, we are no longer limited by power to weight rules of the Moto Equipe Pacific Tuna Car Championship Series that we used to run. Now it's going to be a time attack car. So now we're going to go bigger turbo, bigger brakes, bigger tires. And even though we're stressing the poor stock components of this vehicle, we're going to do it even more now. Let's see how fast we can make the car. Stay tuned for more episodes. We're going to be doing some more video, doing some more articles. So be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos. And check out MotoIQ.com for the rest of the articles.